You want to support Roller Mark Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real. It's Roller Mark Unfiltered by going to rollermartinunfiltered.com. You can make this possible. All right, folks, uh, Augustine Tolton was born to slavery in Missouri in 1854, he escaped to freedom as a child during the Civil War, and later became the first African-American priest in the Roman Catholic Church. He is now set to become the first black saint. Joining us now on Skype to talk about Tolton's path to sainthood is Bishop Shelton J. Uh, Forbeer, a chaplain for the Knights of Peter Claver. The Knights of Peter Claver is the largest historically African-American Catholic lay organization in the United States. Uh, and Bishop, hopefully I got you uh, pronounce your last name correct. Close enough. It's like Bob with an F, Bob, but you did good. Uh, say it again. No, no, was it pronounce it? Fob. Fob, gotcha. All right, right. then. Well, first of all, uh, I, I'm quite familiar with KPC uh, because uh, I was uh, I was born and raised Catholic, and I was a junior knight. My grandfather was in was in KPC. My grandmother was, uh, of course, uh, she was uh, the uh, uh, head of her branch, uh, her auxiliary, about yes. forty plus years. So I'm quite familiar uh, with KPC. But uh, tell us about how. Um, uh, Augustine is, is uh, what did he do to move towards sainthood? Well, you know, God is the one who makes saints, and the church just recognizes that. Augustus Tolton, as you rightly said, is uh, a first African-American priest, clearly African-American priest. He was a very, very holy man. He was born into slavery, and his family escaped. He went on to study in Rome and was fluent in Italian and studied Latin and Greek. So he was a very intelligent young man. He was ordained a priest in Rome, and Father Augustus expected to be sent to Africa, but uh, the leadership in Rome sent him back to the United States, back home to Illinois, and he was a priest in Quincy, Illinois, to rave reviews, an outstanding preacher. He later went on to serve in Chicago as a priest. Naturally, at the time, uh, racism was a very big part of his suffering and life. He, he was, um, uh, in many, many ways, you knew great, great suffering as, as a black priest because of racism. But he loved the people whom he served. He was an outstanding preacher. There were many Caucasian people who went to hear his preaching. He lived a very holy life, and Pope Francis recently recognized that and raised him to the rank of what we call venerable. So we can now ask Augustus Tolton to please pray for us, just as we would ask any friend to pray for us. Now, the next step for him would be a miracle, a miraculous uh, healing or something like that, that would be attributed to, you know, the intercession of Augustus Tolton. He would be beatified, which is a step to being declared a saint. And then after beatification, another miracle would make him a saint, and he would be the first African-American saint uh, in the church. So it's a wonderful thing that Pope Francis has done, and certainly Augustus Tolton is a man whose humility and a man whose virtue and a man whose perseverance we would want to imitate, as well as his great love for Christ. What does this mean for black Catholics specifically? I think it's great. You know, I think it's it's one of our own that the church is consider raising to the altars, as it is said, the first African-American saint. There are many other black saints, St. Martin de Porres, St. Uh, Josephine Baquita, but this would be the first African-American uh, Catholic saint. So I think it's a sign of the fact that African-American Catholics are in this country. We are a part of the church, and we have been and are known for our sanctity and how wonderful it would be to have someone formally recognize that, that this African-American man who, who struggled with a lot amongst the things racism, nonetheless loved the Lord and did great things. And so I think he's a real model, not only for African-American Catholics, but for all Catholics, which is hopefully when he's canonized, he will be lifted up as a model for all Catholics across the world. But this process and 
what Pope Francis has done is a time of great rejoicing for black Catholics and African-American Catholics. All right, Bishop Bob, we really appreciate it. Thanks a lot. And say, uh, please say hello to all of my KPC uh, friends. I've got tons of family who are still in KPC. We appreciate it. Thanks a lot. I will do that. Thank you. All right, folks, back to our Mark unfiltered video in just one moment. All right, folks, uh, they're back. MarijuanaStock.org has another great investment opportunity. If you were lucky enough to invest in their last crowdfunding campaign, you know they raised a lot of money in just a few months investing in legal marijuana farms. Those initial investors now own shares of a publicly traded company. Folks, many of you missed it, but now is a chance for you to take, take participate in this new investment opportunity that is as good, if not even better, than the last one. I'm talking about industrial hemp CBD. For those who don't know, the hemp plant is the cousin to marijuana with a much higher concentration of CBD, which means hemp CBD gives you all the medical benefits of marijuana without getting you high. Until recently, hemp farming was practically illegal in the United States and heavily regulated by the DEA. However, the 2018 Farm Bill recently passed in Congress, making it legal to grow hemp CBD in the U.S. and creating one of the largest commodities worldwide. They need land to grow all of the plants, and this makes for an incredible investment opportunity. That's where our good friends at 420 Real Estate come in. Their business model is very simple. They buy land that supports hip CBD grow operations and lease it to licensed high paying tenants. That's right, they are hemp CBD landlords, and you can get in on the action. You can invest in this crowdfunding campaign for as little as 200 bucks, up to $10,000. Like I said, you don't want to miss out. Folks, you can go to marijuanastock.org. That's marijuanastock.org. Get in the game and get in the game now. Now back to your Roland Martin Unfiltered video.